the ellipse part two. Kinda like a circle, but really not anything like a circle. We've already written an equation. Use decentricity for shape, area, and perimeter. That's what we have left to do in this part because we proved the rope thing and wrote radial equations and made astronomers happy, found the directix, and made peace with our conic cousins. On to area. We start with the equation, solve for y, and integrate over x from negative a to a, adding up all these y's. And substitute. Note that a sine theta means we're measuring the angle from the vertical axis. It's convenient to do that. And we're doing this from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. From negative a to a, we multiply by 2. We're rolling with the double angle formula. This is one of the two double angle formulas that we'll be using. There's one for sine as well. We'll use them over and over again. Integrate, limits, area, and an equation worthy of putting on Google but I prefer this equation in terms of A for size and E for shape. The smaller the E, the bigger the area. Have you ever heard that, that about the circle having the biggest area for a given perimeter? Well, that's kind of what this says, doesn't it? Okay, fine. But let's talk about perimeter. We need to talk about perimeter then to get an equation for that, and then we can go home. Nope, not gonna happen. Fun fact, there is no simple exact equation for the perimeter of an ellipse. If you don't believe me and I can tell you don't, go ahead, find one, Google it, I'll wait. Equation, arc length, derivative, dy dx, substitution, solving for y squared, substitution again, and b squared, and substitution for a, we've seen that before, and integration, thinking about limits. This time it'll be from Theta equals zero to pi over two, and then we'll multiply by four for the ellipse perimeter. Great, terrible, cause you can't integrate that. At least I can't. So we turn to the binomial expansion, the first five terms anyway. We'll do it one term at a time, starting with the first, because that one's easy. You see what we're doing here? Then the second, that one's worse, but with the half angle formula, it's not too bad. Two down, three to go. This time, we need to use the half angle formula twice. Notice that with our limits, with the limits of zero and pi over two, then sine two pi or sine four pi or even sine eight pi, that they all give us zero. So we can just cross them out from the get go. Term four, things get real. Now we need two different substitutions. Collecting like terms and ignoring the signs gives us this. Now, I hate to interrupt, but you are collecting a bunch of myth muffered move. Who really cares what term five gives us? Answer, five terms for five. One, done. Two, out of here. I know your kind gives us signs and that's nothing. Next, three. Huh? What will you give us? Three. Three is three. Four, easy. Too easy. Zero. Five. This is the last one, so say hurrah because there we are, solving for term five like a boss. Okay, what? We used an infinite series to solve this integral and we collected some terms. See the pattern? Neither do I, but let's use it. Let's use it to find the perimeter of this ellipse with these values, which are convenient because they give us a tidy value for B. Hey, do you notice the hidden three, four, five right triangle here? Calculator. With all those pies, we could go off for as many digits as you like. We will be content with six after the decimal point. Notice that the first term is positive and all the rest are negative. Notice also that the first term gives you, would give you the circumference for a circle of radius A. And the following terms correct it based on E or based on B. They get smaller and smaller for the perimeter. The series converges to an answer. But we want more than just a value, we want an equation. So let's rearrange and magnify to see terms one, two, three, four, five. Now that's a pattern and that's the formula. Not a tidy formula and not even an exact formula, but it's good, I used it. Someone should tell Google their online ellipse perimeter calculator, because of course they have one of those, 
gives this, which is scandalous. It's bigger than my value, and my value is necessarily an overestimate. Other websites give other values, which is alarming, especially because of all those digits. I mean, what good are all those extra digits if these three results don't even agree if the answer is closer to 5.0, 5.1, or 5.2? Help is available from Stand Up Maths. He suggests this handy, tidy approximation, which could get along with our mercifully short area equation and some of our online results. But I like this exact, whoops, 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 wait, you can't call it exact. It's not exact. It's just a more precise approximation machine. But if you say it that way, this seems like a huge waste of time. So sadly, I confess the mission is not accomplished unless you're satisfied with this exact, though unsolved, equation. But I like this solvable yet inexact series, and I thank Jerry and Paul for showing it to me. And we'll get to one more fun fact about ellipses in part three.